ओम ज्ञान तिमीरांदस्य ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुरुन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वदाकित वंदेह श्री गुरु श्रीयुत पदकमल श्री गुरून वैष्णव श्री रूप सागर जात सहगण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साद्वैत सवधूत पिजन सहित श्रीकृष्णचैतन्यवाधाकृष्ण पाद सहगण श्री ललिता विशाखान्त हे कृष्ण करुण सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपि कांता राधा कांता नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी श्री राधे वृंदेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचा कल्पतरोभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतीता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णव्यो नमो नम नम ओं विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामनी नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातारिणी जय ओ श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण वेलकम ऑल द डिवोटीज टू द लेवल टू भगवद गीता ऑनलाइन क्लासेस फ्रॉम दिस कॉन मंगलुरु टुडे विल बी लुकिंग इनटू चैप्टर फोर सो अंटिल यस्टरडे राइट सो वी कवर्ड चैप्टर थ्री सो वी वेंट इनटू द detailed uh, description of each and every section so we'll do a quick recap and then uh, say today we'll complete two sections of uh, the fourth chapter and rest will complete in the next weekend on saturday okay so anyone uh, who can volunteer and then give us um, a, a quick recap uh, from uh, the last session right yesterday whatever we discussed or a quick recap of the whole chapter of chapter 3 in one or two lines prabhu ji hari krishna prabhu go ahead hari krishna prabhu uh, one who uh, lives in material existence is called um, as mandavati shri krishna yeah. to hari krishna hari krishna prabhu thank you yeah okay i see rajni mata ji has raised and any other devotees who have not spoken right you can even participate uh, so not a problem so you can speak so it's not that every time you speak it should be right but yeah so whatever you know right you can speak in if not then i'll ask rajni mata ji maybe mata ji you can cover some more portion and then i'll give a chance to others yeah Hare Krishna Prabhu ji Hare Krishna Mata ji right. uh, so the third chapter basically covers uh, the only way to attain higher intelligence is by krishna consciousness and yes. the way to do that is by slowly purifying our senses and work towards uh, our own identity rather than um, uh, falling in prey to any artificial senses and that was yes. the conclusion of the chapter but we started the chapter with all uh, discussing the uh, yugas the four yugas and uh, uh, the faith and everything uh, prabhu ji Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Thank Krishna. you, Madhav Ji. Yeah. Any other participant uh, would like to unmute? So there are so many participants we have not heard once also. So feel free, Prabhu Ji and Madhav Ji, uh, to actually speak. So no issues. Yeah. So we are in the association of devotees, so you can speak. So it's not a problem at all. No. Snigdha Mata Ji, do you want to tell something? Anything you remember, you recollect? Okay, I see. Okay. Go ahead, Pankaj Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Prabhuji. Krishna. Now, uh, Prabhu Ji, there is whatever one section where we. 
also discuss like month uh, like the, who all are the month the one who all are engaged into the material desires and are far away from uh, uh, the uh, like believe in krishna who just uh, keep on enjoying the material pleasure so those person also called as a mand the, the in the, uh, yesterday we studied that was thank you very much hey krishna okay any other reflections anyone has Uh, we mainly discussed one of the shlokas that is the adyat acharati shreshta tatat evetano jana yeah yeah uh, where uh, we took the example of janak maharaj and um, what happened to uh, the way the satisfact um, and the satisfaction is only through krishna consciousness so that is why uh, pure uh, krishna uh, consciousness and that's the only sure uh, sure shot way yeah okay okay now uh, and then uh, we have spent some time so basically uh, if we go the chapter uh, summary right it was uh, initially arjuna's question right so whether renunciation or action yeah and then uh, we went through nishkama karma yoga and then karma kanda section yeah so karma kanda to karma yoga and then lead by example whatever uh, mataji said right so krishna and janak maharaj we had those examples right so though they are liberated and then they don't need to perform all these activities but as to set the example say they performed it and then at the end we saw the uh, main thing right so the greatest enemy so the greatest enemy is lust yeah so and then where does it reside and then how to overcome it so we went through all those right so last um, session so even lust is at times compared to like iceberg yeah so in the ocean whenever you see a iceberg you will only see the upper portion right so there will be a small portion yeah and then you feel that okay so this is all about it but stay until we go nearby and then we see beneath it right so there is a larger portion of the iceberg yeah so that is how lust is deep rooted okay anyhow so that was yesterday's discussion so yeah so let me share the screen and then so today we'll um, move to the fourth chapter which is nothing but uh, the transcendental knowledge yeah? so here so we'll be covering um, so in this chapter right so there are five sections okay so the first section is uh, about uh, the knowledge about uh, krishna's transcendental and uh, the second is uh, krishna as the goal of all paths and the creator of varnashrama system <clears throat> and third is little bit of kar- on karma yoga so here we'll see action in action yeah karma karma vikarma so we'll see and uh, then the sacrifice this uh, lead to transcendental knowledge this is fourth section and fifth is summary of transcendental knowledge so so today right so we'll cover one and two so one and two has got um, many shlokas which are important yeah so we'll cover this in today's section and then rest we'll cover in the next section okay is that fine so in this right so basically the first section right so say we'll know the transcendental knowledge about krishna okay say transcendental knowledge about uh, krishna and what was the disciplic succession yeah and say we'll know the truth about krishna's form so his birth and his activities yeah and the other thing would be like um, in the next section right in section 2 right so we'll see krishna is neutral yeah and uh, say the other things is all about um, understanding krishna and and we'll understand more in krishna and become free from the material bondage so these are the things which we'll actually carry on uh, Yeah. So initially, right? So 
this chapter is the transcendental knowledge and then this will give us a lot of information about when did this bhagavad gita come in right and then you'll appreciate more okay so so when was it spoken whom was it spoken yeah so the authenticity you'll know yeah so this is uh, transcendental knowledge about krishna okay so and then yeah say when was this started and then who were uh, the receivers of it and then what happened in between and then why was it reinstated all this info we'll get in okay so this is uh, basically bit history about bhagavad gita okay so this is this is important uh, to know us right so because bhagavad gita is not a recent book yeah so we, we should know what uh, Okay, all those details. So this is um, four point one. Okay, verse Sri Bhagavan Vacha Imam Vishwate Yogam Proktavan Aham Avyayam Vivashwan Manave Para Manurikshavaku Abravit. So here, Lord Krishna says that this particular science, right, was being taught to. sun god okay vivashwan and then vivashwan actually instructed this to his son manu and then manu to ikshvaku so it was coming in this disciplic succession so this was actually these instructions were given some millions of years ago right so those those were given to the sun god okay the sun god is vivashwan okay and then yeah so this is okay so we'll go here yeah so bhagavad gita was actually delivered by the royal order of all planets beginning from the sun planet so to the sun god so vivashwan is nothing but the sun god so it was first actually given okay so this message was given to them okay and then he gave it to his next generation and then the the next generation gave it to the next okay so it was flowing in that succession so why this knowledge was being given is because the head of or the kings of the planet of all the planets right so or the head of the institution right so basically they should know what is good what is bad and then uh, to rule the citizens and protect them right and then in uh, as per the shastric thing right so that's the reason all these uh, bhagavad gita was being imparted to them okay so this was done um, long back okay so so here if you look in right lord krishna originally made vivishwan as his first disciple okay and thus this uh, knowledge was being actually given uh, <clears throat> to the next generation okay so manu manu being the father of mankind gave it to his uh, son okay maharaj um, ikshvaku ikshvaku is uh, from the sun dynasty okay or uh, yeah suryavanshi we call it right and then uh, so this is the same uh dynasty wherein uh, lord ramchandra appeared okay so if you look in right the king of the earth planet and the forefather of ragu dynasty is ikshvaku in which ramchandra appeared okay <clears throat> so this is how it was flowing through okay so and then in the next verse right he says uh, he explains more about it so this is 4.2 एवं परंपरा प्राप्त इमं राजो विधु सकाले न महता योग नष्ट परंतपा कमिंग इन दि चेन ऑफ डिप्लिक सक्सेशन फ्रॉम दि सन गॉड राइट एंड दिस वॉज ऐक्चुअली भगवद गीता वॉज ऐक्चुअली टॉट टू राज ऋषि सो इन दि पास्ट राइट दि राजा हेड a lot of knowledge they were called raj rishi so they were a combination of um, 
Raja and Rishi. Okay. So, in the sense, they had all the Shastric values and knowledge. So, they were not only the administrators. Okay. So, parallelly, they had the Vedic wisdom. Okay. With them. That's the reason they could rule so well. Because they knew what is right, what is wrong, what is just. Justice, what is injustice, and all those things, right? So they knew very well. So <clears throat> that's how. So if you ask now, right? So in the our in our current political environment or the political leaders which we have got, right? So they don't know all these things. So they don't follow through all these things, yeah. So, but at that time, right? So the Rajrishis, they used to have the kings used to have all this uh, knowledge, yeah. <clears throat> And over a period of time, right, this um, Sakalinam, so over a period of time, this yoga got um, degraded or so it got lost. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the reason uh, Lord Krishna actually spoke to Arjuna once again. Okay. So we'll read now the same thing uh, so bhagavad gita was delivered by the lord on the royal planets yeah beginning sun material okay so we covered this right sorry so this is the one okay so at present yeah we have passed 5000 years of kali yuga so it, this was spoken uh, before uh, kali yuga started right when mahabharat happened yeah this is all the calculations, okay? They like what was the, uh, how many years does Vapar Yuga have, Treta Yuga, yeah, and then how many years uh, we have for uh, Satya Yuga and all those things, right? I will have the pictorial uh, representation also. So we'll see what, how much is the span of Brahma and all those things will come in. But yeah. So in here, right? So this is just a calculation which has been given. Yeah. So actually, Bhagavad Gita was spoken to Vivaswan roughly these many years ago. So this is some 12 million odd years ago. Okay. So when it was first spoken to Vivaswan, uh, and then uh, over a period as it lost the essence, and then uh, most of the leaders and the society. Uh, didn't have the touch of Bhagavad Gita. That's the reason, again, uh, Lord Krishna spoke to Arjuna so that the next generation uh, will continue in the disciplic succession and then they'll learn about Bhagavad Gita. Yeah? So it was re-spoken 5,000 years ago. Yeah, So that is what we told. Yeah, so this is okay. And this is... Uh, the four paramparas which we have in right so basically uh, so anything and everything should fall under these four paramparas okay so we have uh, four paramparas as our lord brahma this is called brahma sampradaya this is sri sampradaya yeah? and then this is uh, shiva sampradaya lord shiva and then kumara sampradaya is nothing but the four kumaras okay these are the four uh, sampradayas which exist, okay, and uh, all all should fall in these four categories. So we should be part of either of them. Yeah? So this is Lord Brahma, and then uh, say in this succession, right, the Madhvacharya. Okay, so he propagated, uh, or he is um, uh, the chief for this, okay. And uh, and in this, right, so it is uh, in Sri Sampradaya, it's uh, Ramanujacharya. And uh, for in uh, Lord Shiva Sampradaya, right, uh, it's Vishnu Swami. And for Kumaras, it is Nimba, Nimbarka Acharya. Yeah? So these are the four disciplic succession. And then we fall in this. Okay. So anyone knows what is our uh, parampara called as? Where do we fall? Uh, the name? Vaishnav. Okay. I'm asking about Parampara. Okay. And that was Anupya Mataji. Brahma, uh, Brahma, Lord Brahma itself, Madhava Parampara. 
Yeah. Because we fall for Vaishnava. Vaishnava Parampara is nothing but the same of Madhava, Madhava Charya, right? Yes, and even Ramanuja Charya is also a Vaishnava, right? Okay. Uh, same thing, whatever you said. Anupriya Mataji, you wanted to tell something? I saw you unmuting. Or is it Ashish Pal? No, Prabhuji. No, Prabhuji. Okay, Ashish Prabhu, you want to tell? Shri uh, Madhva Gauriya Sampadaya. Yeah, yeah, correct. So we fall in Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya Sampradaya. Okay. So oh, as in the followers of this con. Yeah, yeah. So that is our uh, this one. Um, Sampradaya, right? So Iskon Sampradaya comes under Brahma, Madhva, Acharya, Gaudiya Sampradaya. Okay. So yeah. This is important. At least we should know say in which sampradaya we fall in, okay. Rest you can remember afterwards. Yeah, there are four uh, sampradayas or a chain of the disciplic succession. Yeah, and then if you look in right here, also it has been given, right? So it all came from Brahma to Narada, yeah, and uh, say Madhvacharya and all those things, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and so all this list is there, yeah. So our whole parampara list is there. In the Bhagavad Gita introduction itself, and then in this uh, disciplic succession, right? Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and then Gaur Kishor Babaji, and then Bhakti Siddhan Swami Amaraj, and then Prabhupada. Yeah? So it is coming in that succession. So that is the authenticity of our Sampradaya. Okay. So this is. Sorry to disturb, but actually some letters are appearing very small. So Which one? Can, uh, the last thing were appearing very small. So, uh, Prabhuji, can you uh, like slide show this or, or this the, one? Uh, the down ones actually. Uh, yeah, the, oh, uh, this one is it. So this is all I have spoken. So it is uh, nothing uh, much in this. So this is Sri Sampradaya, Brahma Sampradaya, Rudra. And uh, the four uh, Kumara, right? So the same thing. So it's nothing more in this. Is this so better, Prabhu? This is re readable? Because it few are pictures. But, uh, uh, few, uh, like in the right side, we are not able to see the slide. The whole the whole slide is not coming up on the screen. Ah, okay. I'll show it. Okay, right side, there is nothing much actually. So, this is only just an image. But so are you able to see the wordings? So wordings wise, you are okay, right? Mathages and Prabhujas? No, wordings are also covered up. We cannot see. Yeah, what happens? So we were using the same thing, right? Uh, okay. Rahu, I think uh, it is not on slideshow. That is why. You should click on slideshow. No, we had back. yesterday also, we were going through this one. Okay, anyways, it's not a problem. Yeah, now it's it's fine. Okay. So, anyhow, so this is uh, the significance of uh, parampara. If this is better, right, for everyone? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, this deck needs some uh, rearrangement. Okay. We'll see it through. So, Bhagavad Gita is coming directly from Supreme Lord. So, whatever I have been uh, telling, right? So, that is what is being written here. So, in our sampradaya, right? So, it is coming uh, from. Madhvacharya to Lord Chaitanya and then from there on it is coming uh, downwards. Yeah? So till Prabhupada and all this uh, list is there. And uh, so that's the reason, right? Uh, in the market, right, you'll find a lot of people, they'll use uh, the non-believers even, right? Say they do write commentary on uh, Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, They actually use Krishna's name but um, say they actually put in their thoughts into the Bhagavad Gita, which they publish in, yeah? so which is very incorrect. So they'll put all the thought, they'll customize as per their needs. Yeah? So they can't go and write Bhagavad Gita as it is because there are few things which they don't follow. So they'll tailor it uh, as per their requirement and then they'll publish it. So... That's the reason Bhagavad Gita as it is is so popular. Yeah. So, and then we sell so many, ISKCON sells so many copies. So 
so this is the highest sold uh, bhagavad gita all over the world yeah uh, so even i don't know if this picture is uh, blur or so because these are screenshots bro so mathej is i am not sure so how feasible or visible is this but this is basically uh, the lord brahma's life and all right so lord brahma's a day of uh, lord brahma okay uh, see life of brahma is uh, 311 trillion uh, years i yeah? hari krishna i don't uh, know the issue with my end because i am only seeing significance of parampara uh, no charge for the brahma see i don't know if it's if i if it's issue at my end or i will i'll join the discussion or others also are facing so which slide are you seeing prabhu ji and matters significance of param i am seeing significance of param yeah it's the significance of parampara is it life of brahma no no significance of parampara no, significance of parampara uh, let me unshare and share eh? so i don't know yes prabhu ji uh, let me share and share it once again so if this makes things better now yes prabhu yes prabhu ji now it is okay. okay that's okay thank you and sorry for the no yeah, no no problem so because if you are not uh, viewing right uh, you will not understand also because these are numbers so this is difficult to understand also so life of brahma is uh, 311 trillion years yeah so and the day one day of brahma is 4.32 billion years okay and uh, say this right from morning to night so this is the length of brahma so where in the partial creation occurs in the morning and in the night the devastation occurs so every day of brahma which is nothing but 4.32 billion years okay and uh, uh, manvantra okay this is okay so we need no will not this is more for calculation yeah? so like 14 manvantras and plus 15 sandhyas are of same learning and all those things and if you look right so this 71 divya yugas is uh, one manvantra okay and uh, what are 71 divya yugas is nothing but uh, four yugas so when you compare four yugas right so divya yuga is one yuga is nothing but a combination of all four yugas okay the satya yuga lasts for 1728 million years treta is 1.296 million years dwapar is what Uh, 8 lakhs 64000 and uh, kali yuga is the smallest 4 lakh 32 years yeah so this is just for the calculation yeah so and here life of brahma and all right so this is little bit distorted okay so now it is coming brahma has passed 50 years manvantras so this is all calculation okay so how many year time has been elapsed so this will, this is interesting so wherein we have elapsed 5117 years yeah so out of this um, 4 lakh years right and then in kali yuga right so another 5000 is the golden period okay so in kali yuga these 10000 years are the golden years wherein uh, will be uh, say it is the most munificent time so where we can understand the shastras so still there is some religiosity but once we cross this 10000 years right so i think vedic wisdom and all will be lost yeah so from there on actually the kali yuga right so it will actually grow and then it will stretch its arms and all right so before that only right say we should wind up our uh, material existence and go back to the godhead yeah so after that the actual kali yuga right so it will start in so where things are going to be more pathetic yeah
So this is all life of Brahma and then yeah. So 27 same story. Yeah. Gita was spoken 120 million years ago to Vivashwan. Yeah. So that Gita is spoken that long. Yeah. So yeah, this is again the same thing. Um uh, Savarin um it was being uh, spoken to Ikshvaku and then it lost the essence, right? Yeah, this is one day, one day of Brahma is these many years, yeah. And one hour of Brahma is these many years. So one minute of Brahma is this one second of Brahma is one lakh years. Okay. And yeah, in this we will see. Ar uh, Krishna says that why is he discussing all these topics with Arjuna? Because he is the devotee and the dearest friend of uh, Krishna, right? So that is the reason he is speaking. So there is no point of actually speaking uh, Bhagavad Gita or imparting these all knowledge who is not a devotee and then so who doesn't understand itself, right? And there is no point in speaking to atheists. So that's the reason Arjuna was spoken. Arjuna was chosen, so wherein this transcendental knowledge was imparted to him. Yeah. So why Arjuna was chosen? Though there were so many people, right, in the battlefield, but only Arjuna was chosen because he is a pure devotee and friend. And then he accepted the Supreme Personality as his master. Yeah. So that is what. And then once this was spoken, right? Now Arjuna asks, say, he, actually, because um, say they are relatives, right? He says that, uh, uh, Krishna, you are um, of my age, or so you are just a little bit elder than me, but you are saying that you have spoken this particular Bhagavad Gita to Ikshvaku to the sun god and all or Vivashwan, so who were actually um, so pretty old, right? So they are million years old. So he's asking, so how is this possible? So you're of my age, but uh, you're saying that uh, you only actually spoke this transcendental knowledge to them. Yeah. So he's asking. Yeah. So he's clarifying these doubts because there will be a lot of people say after. Bhagavad Gita is spoken, right? There will be a lot of people who will be having this question, saying that how come uh, Lord Krishna, actually who is of the same age of Arjuna, could speak these things to Vivashwanya? Yeah? So, we'll see through the answer. So, wherein Arjuna is inquiring these doubts. So, he knows he is a perfect devotee, but he is asking for us, yeah, and then basically for the atheist community, he is asking all these questions. Yeah, and uh, so this is uh, about um, Sri Krishna's uh, birth, yeah, so so which he took in the, as Lord Krishna, right, so when uh, he took uh, the birth and um, to Devaki and uh, Vasudeva, right, so this is the time and all is being discussed, okay? So, in uh, Dwapar Yuga, yeah, and then, um, say, in Chandravamsham, yeah? So, he was born in Chandravamsham, okay? So, this is just a background. And then, uh, say, now, actually, he gives, so, Krishna tells um, all... Uh, he, he answers the questions which was put by Arjuna. Okay. So now he'll tell, saying that um, uh, how he remembers because um, so he is the supreme controller, right? So though at the time everyone was present, so though Arjuna was present, he might have been uh, present in a different capacity there, but he for he was a jiva. So he forgets that. But Lord Krishna is not jiva, right? Uh, so he is uh, su supreme personality of God, and, and then he remembers everything. Yeah. So here uh, in this verse, right, uh, in four point five, uh, Separan 
So in parampara, there is a word used as uh, parantapaya, so which which means that one who gives to others the transcendental knowledge. Yeah? So he's asking, uh, <clears throat> and then this is the answer which uh, Lord Krishna gives. And he says that uh, there were many years. Uh, so we both of uh, we both were present, but uh, you don't remember, but I remember all of them. Yeah. So that is what he tells in yeah in this, and then even the Lord's uh, birth, right, is transcendental. Yeah. So he. He did not, uh, he was not born uh, in like our material birth and death, right? So he doesn't have any link to it. So initially when um, he was born, right, uh, he showed his four-armed form. Yeah. So to Devaki, right, he appeared in the four-armed four form. Okay. And uh, so then he gave them the history of uh, uh, the birth and then he said that you are my parents um, in previous janmas and then uh, because they did some uh, uh, meditation and then say they got benedictions uh, saying that he'll appear as the son okay of uh, I think uh, it was Prishni um, it was uh, her mo his mother was Prishni in um, before life so he said uh, He'll appear in her womb, right? So all those things he actually tells them, and then actually uh, Devaki and Nand Maharaj actually pray to the Lord, and then the Lord actually uh, so transforms into a small baby. Yeah. So when he was born, right? Uh, even at that time, right? He had all the jewels and everything. Yeah. So his birth is very transcendental. Yeah. And uh, so even when he was born, right, um, so all the gatekeepers and all so they went to sleep. So there was rain so that actually everything is pitch dark and then people don't venture out. Yeah. And then it will be easy uh, for uh, Vasudev to carry him uh, to the other side of the river. Right. Uh, so all these arrangements were done. So these are all transcendental, yeah? and uh, this is uh, basically discuss uh, what is the difference between us and Krishna, right? So we are jivas, yeah? and uh, we are Anu, his vibhu, yeah, and we, right? Say our covering, right, is basically of uh, we have three bodies, okay? So one is the gross body, which is made up of. Uh, the five materials, Pancha Mahabhut. So yesterday we just touched paste, right? In one of the shlokas. So it is made of earth, water, air, fire, and ether. And then pose that we have a subtle body, which is nothing but uh, false ego, intelligence, and mind. Yeah? And then there is another shell, which is nothing but soul, which is eternal, which is Satchitanan. So basically, if you have to remember this, right, you can remember this as a coconut, right? So if you look in right, the coconut at the covering, right, so it has uh, it has got that coir type of thing, right? So you remove that, then you get the shell. That is nothing but your subtle body. And then you find the cream or the pulp. So that is the soul, okay? So you can remember uh, in that way. So that is easy. Yeah. And then, so, and the other difference is we are controlled. Okay. We are controlled by the three modes of material nature. But so Lord is independent of it because he is the master of senses. Yeah. And uh, Maya is controlled by the Lord. Yeah. So that is the difference. And then this is the tabular form which has been given. Okay. So to understand more easily, right? Um, so difference between um, Krishna and the conditioned living being. Conditioned is nothing but we, living entities. Okay. He is eternal and remembers past, present, and future. 
we are eternal but we don't remember anything yeah remembers all births because body does not change or deteriorate so whenever say krishna's body is transcendental yeah so it doesn't actually go into those six phases which the material body goes through yeah and then he appears by his own will so though there are some calculations that he should actually appear in a millennium once but he doesn't actually need any calculation so whenever there is a religiosity and then he feels that uh, the devotees or the sadhus are being tortured and there is imbalance in the society he appears in yeah and uh, so we are forced by karma body is transcendental body is material yeah so he has no difference between uh, body and self but we have difference yeah so yeah his form is swarupa so and the other thing is uh, when uh, lord krishna was um, in the battlefield right uh, with arjuna they so both were around 90 90 95 of age yeah but he he was looking as 25 year old uh, he had a body of 25 year old yeah so he his body doesn't get old okay <clears throat> so unlike our body yeah so that is being uh, actually told here and then the same thing is there in the purport also and then uh, in 4.7 to 8 he talks about his activities uh, so the reason why the lord appears so anyone remembers what is this picture all about or knows who is this person who is uh, uh... Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna. I think so. It is uh, Shishupa uh, Krishna like uh, Ruk- he took the Rukmani from the Shishupa. I guess. Okay. Uh, anyone else? I guess else? to Narka Prabhu Ji, it is Kansa. Uh, yeah. uh, it's a uh, it is Vasudeva protecting safety from Narka. Yeah, correct. So this is Kamsa. Okay. So who is uh, when he heard the Akashwani, right? Uh, Akashwani. Was, and, yeah. yeah. And then he was about to kill his own sister. Okay. Prabhuji, uh, sorry. So actually, I am in outside of my room. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Mataji. Yes, okay, Mataji. Okay. Sorry, sorry. I'm speaking at the time. Okay. so now the question is when does uh, the lord appear right so the next question is he says that when does he appear okay so uh, this shloka everyone knows i, I think majority of them you know it right yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyuttanam adharmasya tadatmanam sujamya so whenever there is uh, injustice and then um, say when um, say the demonic qualities are more right uh, and uh, so at that time the lord actually comes in yeah so then the next slide next one is also the follow up of this particular verse whenever and wherever there is decline in religious practice or descendant of bharata and a predominant rise of your religion at that time i descend myself so whenever there is a religiosity right so whenever the demonic qualities and then the demons are actually um so taking up or say they they become more powerful right at that time so when they become the majority and then the pious people they are in minority right uh, so at that time the lord appears basically so the fall of yeah so when does this lord appear right although the lord appears on a schedule yeah so there is a schedule so he should actually appear once in a millennium and all those things but uh, he doesn't have any he doesn't follow in those things yeah so whenever the principles of dharma or religion um, is actually 
uh, in danger, right? He comes in and then uh, say he settles down the things. Yeah. So he comes in or any of his avatars, right? So either Lord Krishna may come in or there are so many avatars of uh, Lord, right? Say like uh, say he came in the form of uh, Narasimha Dev, right? Uh, so where in his uh, pure devotee Prahlad. So Prahlad was being tortured and then uh, say he mm -hmm. He was about to kill Prahlad, right? So here in the Kashyapu. So at that time, so the Lord appeared, and uh, even here, right, Kamsa. So Kamsa was actually doing all religious thing, irreligious things, and then uh, so he was of a demonic quality, right? Um, so by then the Rakshasas or the demons were too many. So the Lord had had to come. So wherein he had to come and then kill all these uh, unwanted population yeah so either he comes in or his any of his avatar comes in yeah so and every avatar right so which comes in say has got some purpose behind it yeah so any avatar you take right so he comes in and then he takes uh, different forms also at times he takes the form of a boar he at times he takes uh, the a form of half man and half lion. Yeah. So, if you look at, there is a logic because um, why did he come as an half lion and then uh, half man? Because uh, Hiranyakashipu had a boon, right? Say he should not be killed uh, with weapons, and then uh, he should not be killed on the ground, nor in the sky, yeah, nor inside his house, nor outside his house. So to meet all those criteria, right? So the God came in. So, which means that uh, Hiranyakashipu had the highest boon to enjoy the material life, yeah? but still he was unsatisfied. And then he was thinking that he'll never die. yeah. And then he used to give tough times to the devatas also. So, uh, but what happened? So, there is a limit and then when he crossed the limit right the lord himself uh, came in so there is no such boon which we can get from other devatas right so and we'll come through that also in the next verses so any boon we which we can we we'll get from the devatas right by making them happy so to actually counteract that right so lord krishna appears in and uh, you know, right, the penances which Hiranyakashipu did, so the whole body of his was actually eaten uh, by the worms yeah, and ants. Yeah. They had eaten up all his body. Still, he was doing the penances, austerity, yeah, to get these boons, yeah, unwanted boons. And then, though he asked intelligently so many things, but yeah, so he had to die in the hands of Lord Krishna. And uh, so this is the next extension of that, uh, 4.8, Paritranaya Sadhunam Vinashaya Chadushkrutam Dharma Samsthapanarthaya Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. So to deliver the pious yeah, and to annihilate the miscreants and to re-establish the principle of religion, I myself appear millennium after millennium. Okay, So that is what when the Lord appears. So here the example of uh, Prahlad Maharaj and Devaki is given. So we have already covered this. Yeah? And then uh, there are Yuga avatars also. So there are different avatars. Okay, uh, So like uh, Purusha avatars, Guna avatars, Leela avatars, these things uh, if you get, if any of the chapters are small, right, um, say we can cover this afterwards. Yeah, The avatars Possibly in the Goloka chart, we can see through um, if we get time. Yeah. And uh, in this age, right, in the age of Kali, right, so this uh, Lord Chaitanya's avatar is Yuga avatar. Yeah. And then he came to actually spread Krishna conscious. So this was merciful uh, incarnation. Okay. So wherein he came and then he actually distributed the Sankirtan. Okay. Uh, he gave the medicine for Kali Yuga. How can we actually get out of this uh, 
birth and uh, cycle um, problem right so he came and then he gave us the medicine and then the next verse right so here what is the benefit of knowing krishna's appearance right so one may think that uh, what is the benefit of uh, knowing krishna's appearance yeah <clears throat> so one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not upon leaving the body okay takes his birth again in this material world but attains my eternal abode so this is what the lord has spoken so lord krishna is speaking from his own mouth yeah so he has he this is what is has come out from his mouth so the words is janma karma chame devyam evam yo veti tatvata bhakta deham punar janma neti ma miti so arjuna yeah so anyone who knows or who shows interest to learn these things right uh, the transcendental nature of his appearance yeah and disappearance so he will not take the birth so basically is uh, telling about his devotees yeah so what will happen to the devotees and then in the next verse right he actually speaks about uh, the problematic things yeah say one should be free from attachment fear anger vita rag so this is what raga bhaya and krodha right so raga is nothing but attachment bhaya is fear krodha is anger so you'll have to be detached from this and then being fully absorbed in lord krishna right so this is being followed by many of the um sages in the past and then he says uh, this is being fully absorbed in me and taking refuge in me many many persons in the past became purified by knowledge of me and thus they all attained the transcendental love for me so this is tried and tested yeah but the only thing is we should be freed from these three so which is very difficult yeah so material people right so we are mostly on the bodily conception of life life um, so and <clears throat> mostly what happens is uh, we see that the body perishes right um, so it actually grows and then it diminishes and then it's dead so due to this ignorance right and uh, when we say that people like um, say lord is personal right so that's the reason most of and for them right they feel that lord is impersonal okay because our body deteriorates right they don't have the transcendental knowledge saying that the body of the lord is transcendental which is imperishable yeah so all those things they don't know and then they feel that lord is impersonal and we are personal and so they feel that the highest thing would be to actually go and merge into the brahma jyoti okay so that is how they feel and then if you tell them right okay so lord is also personal right so they again feel that okay so again we'll have to go through this cycle because they don't have the knowledge so that's the problem okay here knowing the existence of spiritual life that is individual and personal scares them of becoming persons again they feel that oh okay okay again exams yeah again disease again we'll have to fight through this but they don't know that once you reach the goloka right so they will be free from all this <clears throat> and we will also have a spiritual body there yeah and there are few right so who will not believe in all these things yeah and uh, they they'll take um uh, the help of other things right intoxication and all those things and then they actually destroy all their own life yeah so that's uh, something and then so to get free from all these material conception right so we'll have to go to a spiritual master and follow the disciplic succession and then the sadhana basically the sadhana and the regulative principles right and these are different stages of devotional services of life so which we'll go through and the next bhava is one of them yeah 
bhava prema and uh, so we have so we'll go through those slides so this is basically the same thing which is being uh, discussed yeah you see kru sorry krodha conception of void so we just spoke in right so bhaya is nothing but uh, thinking that impersonal is compare so they feel right again getting a material body is painful yeah and then here krodha these people actually are they uh, they are in some hallucination yeah? and then they take intoxications and then they are frustrated so they kill themselves we can't help them so next is applying the knowledge of uh, the transcendental knowledge right so the same thing right so by hearing about krishna right many many persons in the past they got purified yeah <clears throat> so what if someone take shelter of krishna with some something other than a desire to achieve a devotional or the transcendental love for him so this is uh, another thing so wherein we every time there is a question right how does krishna reciprocate i think i believe majority of our class also had uh, this question right say so how does krishna reciprocate yeah so here krishna says okay the answer is been given here in 4.11 and uh, say so how dependent are we on krishna and then uh, so krishna reciprocates accordingly yeah ये यथा प्रपर्द्यंते ताम तथे भजाम्यम माम वर्तमानुवर्तन्ते मनुष्य पार्थ सर्वस सो एज ऑल सरेंडर ऑन टू मी आई रिवार्ड दम ओके सो एवरी वन फॉलोज मई पाथ इन ऑल रेस्पेक्ट सो कुड इट बी ज्ञानी कुड इट बी ए भक्त और ए कर्मी ऑल वॉट एवर the path is right so everyone actually prays to lord krishna only directly or indirectly okay so and then depending upon our surrender right the lord rewards okay so like take an example of uh, prahlad maharaj right so when he was thrown from the cliff okay so he was completely surrendered to the lord and then the lord protected him even when his father was about to kill him right say so he never resisted it so he knew he was fully surrendered so it depends how surrendered we are yeah? so and the lord actually reciprocates accordingly yeah so here he is partially realized in his impersonal brahma jyotir and as omni present super soul so he is present in each of us as super soul even in the worms yeah everyone is searching for krishna in different aspects okay so the impersonalists are searching him in brahma jyoti yeah and the transcendental world also knows that krishna reciprocate just as the devotee wants him so as the devotee wants right so at times he acts as a friend at times as a lover at times as a son yeah so whatever rasa the devotee is like right he actually reciprocates it but that is at a very high level of uh, devotion yeah so that we can't understand even and then he even uh, he rewards all the devotees equally according to their different intensities of love for him so what what kind of love we have towards krishna right krishna actually reciprocates accordingly yeah so here this chart will actually give you more uh, clarity so if you look in right um, so this is how you realize uh, the three levels of realizing the absolute so here you see right um everyone is looking for krishna in different aspects okay fruitive worker worker say yagneshwara impersonalist brahma jyoti yogis mystic powers and then devotees are have they have the five uh, primary rasas right um, shanta rasa sakya prema 
and dasya vatsalya yeah so those are the five rasas uh, so which the devotees look in and everyone is dependent on krishna's mercy okay for the success so whoever it is right he is ultimately dependent on krishna the way you surrender krishna reciprocates okay Yeah, and then these are the five uh, rasas which we spoke in right santa rasa is nothing but uh, the kadamba tree or the flute and all those things the dasya rasa is nothing but active service yeah like hanuman sakya rasa is nothing but the friends uh, like um, subala yeah lavanga all all these uh, names you'll get uh, to know when you read krishna book yeah and uh, Sevatsalya Rasa, Yashoda Maya, yeah? and Nand Maharaj, Madhurya Rasa, Gopis and Radharani. Yeah? And uh, these are the nine steps of Bhakti Yoga. So this is uh, advanced. We'll see this in uh, Bhakti. Uh, okay. When we go into the Bhakti Yoga, right? So we'll uh, actually go into this. This is only pasted. The reason is we saw Bhava in that uh, purport, right? So Bhava is here. Okay. First, it uh, starts from Shraddha, uh, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajan Kriya, Ananta Nivriti, Nishta, Ruchi, Asakti, Bhava, and Prema. So, all these are the different stages of Bhakti. Okay. So, yeah. And then, how do you do? These are the nine process of devotional service. Yeah. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, Pada Sevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam. Yeah. It goes in that way. Yeah, impersonalists do not agree, uh, say because they they don't believe, right? So that uh, Lord is uh, having a form. So that is uh, so. Prabhupada says that that's a spiritual society, yeah? and all those things we just covered, right? So it's all written here. That's it. So Yogeshwara and all those things. And so men in this world, right, who want success or who want to enjoy the fruits faster, right? So they actually got go to different devatas and then they get the boon because it is very easy to actually um, get the boons from um, the devatas yeah, compared to Lord Krishna. Because if you see in right in the history also, like. Um, Bhashmasura, right? He got the boon from Lord Shiva. And then he was running out of, on, uh, running towards Shiva. And then he wanted to kill him because he he wanted to take away Lord Parvati. Yeah? So they actually go and then they try to get in. So quick work, right? So they actually go there and uh, so they get the boon. Yeah? And then. <clears throat> So we should know that uh, see the devdas are uh, actually delegated. So the God has delegated them uh, the prescribed duties, and then they are performing those activities. Yeah? So we should know that, and uh, see the ultimate person is Krishna. Yeah. So even uh, the demigods, right, or the devatas, they are also on the living entity, but they are at the higher platform, okay? So they are also on the material platform. Even Lord Brahma, who is the first creator, right? Uh, so he also ends his life. Okay, He also has got a lifetime, though it is uh, far, far, far superior, which we can't think of. But yes, say so one day he is also not there, okay? So everyone, right, except Lord Krishna, right, the whole creation is his and everything gets destroyed okay and then no and then again he also only has to create so whenever on his own will right he creates it yeah and um, so that is um, more we discussed right brahma and shiva and then even the, but that doesn't mean that uh, brahma and shiva are uh, the the Lord Brahma and Shiva are on our power also. So they are absolutely on a different platform. Yeah? So, <clears throat> so we are nowhere and we should not actually talk ill of them. 
so even uh, so we so it is in stature to lord krishna we are talking but uh, say we should not comment anything on brahma or shiva so we don't have the authority to do that yeah so and then this is a small uh, presentation of um, say krishna and the devatas right so so this is one is nothing but krishna yeah so others the dev devatas are nothing but the appointed chiefs by lord yeah and then they are created by supreme so so lord is not created right so he and uh, he has delegated various grades and then yeah they are dependent he is super supremely independent yeah so all those things they have uh, even the devatas go through this cycle but we don't so we not sorry lord krishna doesn't go so this is just and <clears throat> this is another shloka so wherein uh, lord krishna says that uh, the varnashrama dharma right so that, that is also created by him so 14.4.13 uh, verse right chatur varnyam maya tristam guna karma vibhagasya tasya kartaram apima vidhi ak akartaram avyayam so all these right these are basically this divisions he has done on the basis of guna and karma okay so on the modes of uh, guna and the karma which we have right so on those basis this actually varnashrama is been designed yeah the so mode of goodness is brahmanas kshatriyas are mode of passion yeah and vaishyas are uh, mixed mode of uh, passion and ignorance sudras are mode of ignorance so according to the three modes of material nature the work associated with them the four divisions of human society are created by me yeah the lord says this was created by him depending upon the guna karma okay and although i am the creator of the system you should know that i am yet the non doer being unchangeable so he is not affected by this so he he is just the facilitator yeah so in this right so all these um say varnashramas are there right so in this this is depending upon the mode of goodness and not by birth yeah so like uh, if you are birth born in a brahmana family right so that doesn't mean that you are a brahmana okay so the actual in this chatur varnyam right so anyone can be a brahmana un- if he has the mode of goodness eh? so that is the way it was divided not based on the caste system which now the politicians have tweaked in eh? <clears throat> so that is how and then he gave in yeah so he gave uh, the brahmanas as they were in the mode of goodness they were given uh, they were actually kept as the intelligent class of men and uh, kshatriyas got the administrative class vaishyas mercantile business and uh, the shudras were the one who assist all others yeah and then all work towards the goal of satisfying vishnu yeah so that that should be the ultimate thing okay so that is what uh, the purpose yeah so to elevate and he gives the reason also what's the purpose of this system so elevate from animal status of uh, to human status yeah else it will be like the animal uh, life only right eating sleeping defending and mating so else we'll be into that cycle only there is no difference between animals and us so that's the reason all these things have been um, given and so the purpose in this system is to purify ourselves yeah and ultimately reach lord krishna yeah so i think this is more or less we have covered these things right brahmana and all this yeah okay so this is all uh, mixture of guna and karma right varnashrama dharma how did he create it so this is same we spoke right guna and karma and then these are the ashramas for brahmanas yeah brahmana has got four ashramas 
um kshatriyas has got 3 yeah and then uh, brahmachari or so the vaishyas have got uh, this and shudra so if you look in right uh, in kali yuga majority of us are in this category only yeah so that is the hard reality so and then there is no work so he says that there is no work uh, nor i do aspire for any fruits of action yeah so he just comes and then he does all these activities um, he does all these pastimes uh, for the devotees right so and uh, see he is not attached to any of these things yeah so that is what uh, and then he doesn't need anything because uh, in uh, his purna yeah so he doesn't need anything from anyone or so out of the pure devotional love right so actually to do the pastimes with his devotees he actually takes different um, roles that's it he says he's creator but he's aloof okay and then he's he's not interested in this uh, you see hello from the creation he just creates and then he gives the facilities yeah and then so it is up to us to pick um, we depending upon the gunas right we pick and the karmas good and bad activities it is because we have got a little bit of uh, freedom to choose that so that's the reason uh, we use that independence in choosing good or bad things and then we actually get entangled into this yeah yeah and then this is the last verse we'll finish it off um, all the liberated soul in ancient times acted with my understanding of my transcendental nature therefore you should perform your duty following in their footsteps so he's ask he's telling that <clears throat> you should follow the footsteps of what the great sages and others have done in right uh, or the liberated souls and uh, <clears throat> so you will also get liberated so that is what is being told and then we'll stop here and uh, we'll pick the other things from next class onwards okay uh, anything any questions anyone has sorry there was some disruption with the ppt hope uh, after i did the first resharing uh, it was good right so everyone could see through the ppts okay uh, did we mark the attendance uh, okay all are yes Prabhuji. okay Hare Krishna. Okay, Pankaj Prabhu, go ahead. Uh, you have some question. Hare Krishna Prabhu, then what uh, Prabhu, uh, like we know Krishna created the entire universe and this universe has billions and billions of species. Mm -hmm. So, and again, uh, Krishna is the one who remembers all the species, not just this lifetime, but every lifetime every lifetime that the species has covered till now like whatever so how, how does like uh like god uh remembers like so 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 many uh like all, all of his creation uh like so much of like so many memories is it because like uh we studied like shit again uh when the you uh when you apply know, life was created, Shiro Dashai, Vishnu entered into all and then it started. So is it because of the Shiro Dashai Vishnu that God remembers everything or like does God have super memory? So yeah, Prabhu, that was a question. See, How does God remember everything? So he is Sarva Karana Karanam, right? So he is uh, Ishvara Paramakrishna. So in Brahma Samhita, it is said that um, say he is unborn. Yeah. So he is always there. Yeah. So Garbhadeksha, Vishnu, and all these are what? Krishna only, right? So he is Ajam. He is unborn and then he remembers everything. Yeah. So he's 
he actually lies in the ocean yeah? and uh, so out of his will only all these things happen okay and uh, so if you are asking then he is sarva karana karanam and then he is the oldest of old and uh, so lord brahma who is the first creator right uh, or uh, so is the first uh, living entity right he is being created by the lord himself okay so is that old and then so he knows everything yeah <clears throat> so that that is the difference right uh, he, we are anu and then he is vibhu yeah so that's the difference between uh, lord and us so we are we have not been given those memories yeah so because if we have been given a memory of our past life right it is very pathetic we can't live in this life say if in your last life you were a king and in this life you are a dog of the same palace can we live we can't right that's the reason lord actually doesn't give us that he keeps he doesn't give us the last life's memory yeah yes prabhu but uh, again can we say that krishna is also much self sufficient but then why do we have like a uh, other different god like vishnu who is responsible for administration and then balbrahma with so he has created right so <clears throat> So Lord has delegated all these uh, activities, right? So like the, there is a prime minister of India, right? So think Lord Krishna is the prime minister of India. And then he has actually given other portfolios, right? So he has given a portfolio like a finance minister to someone. He has given defense minister to someone. He has given some other ministry to someone, yeah. So and the reason we spoke in the third chapter also right so because when we satisfy them right so we get the rains and all right so we are actually praying the demigods right so the or the devatas right we satisfy them and then say we get our daily or say whichever are required to sustain our life right so the required things are actually arranged by the devatas yeah got it prabhu yes sir thank you prabhu hari krishna yeah sukan so, prabhu uh, god you had some question hari krishna prabhu ji sandarbh pranam Um, probably the question would be a very a very crude uh, because we have we have known the answer uh, but still you know i can't sometimes i can't you know give justification to this answer to 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 answer this question for example uh, it is always we say that krishna is sarva karana karanam mm. everywhere it is said and he is of sarva karana karanam now the question is why do he become cause for creation of demons like hiranyakashipu or hiranyaksha or kansa or the that matter ravan <coughs> matter and why should i create something that creates problem so the other thing is uh, lord krishna also wants some enemies okay so at times if he has um he wants to at rasa also so if you look in with bhishma also right he had veera rasa okay so there was a vow uh, which lord krishna took in saying that he'll not lift the weapon in mahabharata but he had veera rasa so he and bhishma were sharing veera rasa so wherein bhishma his devotee wanted to save him a lifting the weapon that's the reason he took a wheel and then he was going right he was charging mm-hmm. and the other thing is uh, this hiranyakashipu and all these things are nothing but they were devotees of the lord itself okay and uh, say hiranyakashipu and hiranyakashya are what jay vijay mm-hmm. so because they were given a chance yeah the lord gave them a chance so he said that um, so whether you want to be as my enemy and then get liberation after three janmas or so you want to actually uh, take the other path uh, the transcendental way right he was they were given two choices okay so both the ways uh, they were given so one was in the good way so like in devotion and then with all good qualities there would be 
six or seven lives and then uh, the other three would be of demonic one so they chose that uh, we'll go to the demonic we'll finish first the demonic yeah and then lord wanted uh, to have some engagement so some uh, enemy engagement right so that's the reason they were created and even because these things came in because to the next generation right so we know that even if there is someone like an hiranyakashipu who is actually materially inclined yeah, and then who actually is so powerful that even indra chandra and everyone used to fear for hiranyakashipu and then everyone was thinking that he is immortal he himself was thinking that no one can kill him but the lord came and killed him so this is to tell people that material enjoyment has a limit and spiritual so spiritual is something different and you can't actually enjoy material senses or you can't lord the material senses to the fullest yeah so if at all the lord wills then you can if not the lord can come at any time in any form and then he can actually stop it okay prabhu yes prabhu makes sense prabhu perfect thank you hari krishna hari krishna rajini mata ji i think class is extending <laughs> okay it's okay uh, we'll take last question and then wrap up no uh, i have multiple questions prabhu ji i'm sorry i'm so, sorry i keep so asking a lot of questions ones. actually <laughs> <laughs> and maybe others you can discuss in bhakti vriksha but uh, whichever you feel that is most important you can ask okay in 4.1 the history of bhagavad gita you say that it is a viva uh, uh, viva swan yeah. who, who was first told and you said that it is sun god but yeah. sun god is surya mahadev right surya uh, surya no no the name of uh, the sun god is viva swan um, what's the meaning of viva swan i don't know mata ji <laughs> so the name is that so it is referred to viva swan um, so the okay. name of uh, the sun god is vivashwan okay yeah. and in 4.2 you said that kings were uh, uh, raja rishis yeah. so is it that the kings themselves were raja rishis or they had raja rishis no, in their no. they had the quality they were raja rishis they were having the qualities of both administration and vedic knowledge oh, so take okay. the example of yudhishthir maharaj mataji Hmm. yeah so he was a raj rishi right so he knew the vedic system and then he knew the administration also take okay. the example of uh, lord ramchandra yeah? hmm. take the example of janaka all these were raj rishis yeah? right and then you take the oh, examples okay. of current leaders which you have in the world oh, so then you'll understand <laughs> okay so i need yeah. not name them exactly yeah? okay and uh, uh, i have another one one more question like uh, now we we belong to the narasimha clan like we uh, we are from the narasimha uh, family we belong to Nar- narasimha dev so now uh, even is narasimha dev considered as a, a demigod no narasimha dev is an avatar of vishnu no? avatar only right okay so it is not uh, so only the rest of the gods that uh, uh, ishvara or shakti that Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Maheshwari, that is called yeah. demigods. So, what about the Ma 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 Lakshmi? It is Radhe. That is internal potency, Mata Ji. So, Radha Rani is internal potency of uh, Lord Krishna. This is a little bit uh, advanced topic. You will understand these things uh, when you. But remember that it is the internal potency of. the lord radha rani is uh, sorry what, what what is the word prabhu i'm sorry i did not understand internal potency mata ji so internal potency okay yeah, so there are different uh, aspects to it you'll know so it is the internal energy so radha rani is nothing but a part of lord krishna only so right. manifest from his internal potency mm-hmm. so it's not separate both radha so, rani and krishna are one only so this is advanced mataji because we will not confuse others <laughs> yeah so you'll yeah. get to know all these things uh, when you slowly read krishna book and uh, bhagavatam and all these things right uh, 
you know. actually there are so many more questions i don't know where to ask like whenever i'm reading that explanations of bhagavad gita in one by one no uh, shloka yeah. and all that i'm like getting so many questions it's yeah, like yeah you can write it down mata ji so if you feel that there are a lot of questions right write it down and then whatsapp to aishwarya mata ji or and then she can actually give it to me or you can whatsapp to me i'll check and respond okay sure uh, sure prabhu ji Thank and then so use uh, i think uh, the bhakti vrikshas uh, you should utilize that therein yes majority of the questions would be resolved so we have so i think prabhu ji and mata ji also have good knowledge in this so like uh, sukant prabhu pankaj prabhu and all right so you all can discuss i think even yeah. others also so everyone has some knowledge and then if you brainstorm right majority of your answers would be sorted i have only questions no answers <laughs> <laughs> it starts like that only mata ji it's good so okay so, we'll wind up sorry uh, so we have extended today but yeah good discussion vancha kalpataro vyascha kripa sindhu vyaye vacha patitana pavane bhyo vaishne bhyo namo namo hari krishna hari krishna sabhi thank you